Hey, so it's been a while since I've done a smart home related video, but recently I saw the Google Nest Hub Max on sale for Black Friday, so I decided to pick it up. In our house, we've had a Nest Hub for the last couple of years, and I have found it really useful in the kitchen. My wife, Stephanie, also uses it for media, like watching Netflix while cooking. We were getting a little tired of the small screen on the Nest Hub, so we decided to upgrade when the opportunity came up. The Nest Hub has a seven inch display versus the 10 inch display on the Hub Max. The Hub Max is typically $299, but I think we picked it up for about $100 off. But that kind of begs the question, are these devices worth the price? What do they actually do and is it right for you? Let's jump in. Let's start by comparing the two Nest Hub devices that Google sells. I already mentioned the different display sizes, seven inch versus 10 inch. Also noticeable right away, the Nest Hub has no camera, whereas the Max has a built-in camera at the top of the display. As far as audio goes, the Max has a bigger set of speakers naturally. The Nest Hub, however, has sleep sensing if you wanna put it on your nightstand because it has built-in solely radar. The second gen Nest Hub has three microphones versus the two on the Nest Hub Max. The Nest Hub has been refreshed more recently, so perhaps that's the reason for that. Since I just purchased the Nest Hub Max, I can show you the unboxing. It's a simple experience since there's just one large device inside. It's quite a hefty thing, to be honest. It's really not exactly light. It's really two things melded together. A large display, or essentially kind of a tablet, stuck on top of a decent size home speaker. There's a camera and mic hard switch on the back, as well as a volume rocker on the back of the display, kind of to the side. For comparison, I put the two models side by side. The specs don't really do the difference between these two justice. The Hub Max feels like a monster beside the regular Hub. Now let's talk about the UI a little bit here. When you're not using the Hub, it will essentially show you photos. It really makes a killer photo frame because you can just connect it with Google Photos and it just automatically updates you with new photos without you having to think about adding new ones. You can select from family and friends recent highlights, favorites, and other albums. Or you can select Art Gallery, which is Google's curated artwork. You can also select a full screen clock, but to me that's kind of boring. To get into the menu, just tap the display. The first section they have is called Your Morning or Your Afternoon, which is just a few suggestions of what you might want to do with the display. Things like looking at specific photos, changing the thermostat, or checking the weather. You can flip over to Home Control, and here's where you get access to any smart home devices that can connect to Google. For example, lights, cameras, thermostats, speakers, televisions, and so on. You can jump into each one and control it, or you can run routines which puts together a series of commands. You can also check out the media section. It's gonna show you a couple more suggestions, in my case, YouTube and YouTube Music. The Communicate tab allows you to make phone calls, video calls with Google Duo, or even Zoom calls. You can also broadcast, which is a way to send an audio message to the rest of the house if you have Google Nest displays or speakers elsewhere. We have three Nest Mini speakers as well as the two displays, and so if I broadcast from here, it should be pretty audible almost anywhere in the house. If you swipe up from the bottom of the display, you get some quick actions like controlling the brightness, volume, turning the camera on and off, do not disturb, setting alarms, and so on. One of the big reasons to have a display in the kitchen is to watch or listen to media while you're cooking or cleaning. We spend so much time in the kitchen, we might as well be entertained. As far as video goes, you can link up directly with Netflix, Disney+, Plus, as well as YouTube. So you can ask Google directly to play videos or shows from any of those services. For music, you can connect with YouTube Music, Spotify, Deezer, and iHeartRadio. Just a side note about this, if you watch my Apple One review, then you know that I'm an Apple Music user, which unfortunately isn't available as a service on the Nest Hub, at least not in Canada. Apparently in the US, you can link it up. That's kind of annoying, honestly, and I'd love to see that option soon. However, since I'm a YouTube Premium subscriber, I also get access to YouTube Music without ads. So that's what I've got connected. For radio, we have Sirius XM linked, and for podcasts, you can use Google Podcasts or Spotify. 
And then you also have Chromecast built in, which allows you to essentially cast any media that you can't get directly. As long as the app you're using has the Chromecast button, then you're in business. We definitely use the media functions all the time. We're typically you know, listening to music. I like to watch YouTube on it. And my partner likes to watch Netflix to pass the time doing housework. On a related note, you can also use gestures like simply holding your hand up to the camera in order to pause and resume your media or dismiss timers and alarms. Beyond smart home control, I also like the integration with my Google Nest video doorbell. When someone rings the door, the Nest announces it and it allows you to see who it is. Plus, you can use the two-way audio function to talk with whoever's at the door. I don't use that option too much. I mostly just check to see who's at the door and if some kind of door-to-door -door sales thing, then I can just ignore it and not answer. Speaking of two-way audio, I mentioned before that you can make video and audio calls using the Nest Hub Max. And you can do the same with the Nest Hub, but since it doesn't have a camera, it's just audio. This is a great feature. You can ask the device to call someone in your contacts. And of course, Google Duo works really well in this case. And it allows you to make a video call to someone's phone. Or if I'm out, I can use my phone to call this specific Nest Hub Max and have a video call with whomever is in the kitchen. Definitely a highly useful feature. I also wanna mention why this is specifically so useful in the kitchen. I already discussed the ability to play media, movies, and TV shows. Of course, it's really nice to be somewhat entertained if you have to put some work in, in the kitchen. However, there's a few other reasons it's awesome. We use Google's shopping list service, it's free, and we can add things to our list right from the hub. Usually, you're in the kitchen when you notice you need something, so it's super convenient. Then later, on, you can pull up the list while you're in the grocery store on your phone. It's a small thing, but it makes a huge difference. Then you can pull up a recipe just by asking Google to find one. Usually you can just request a recipe and Google pulls one of the most popular results and shows it to you in a card format that's easy to read and follow. And of course, something we all need to do in the kitchen is set timers which the Nest Hub does well. So that's the Nest Hub overview and review for 2021. The initial question was, is it worth it? To me, the answer is yes. We use the Hub multiple times per day for various reasons, and it's definitely a fixture in our digital lives. Is there room for improvement? Yes. Oftentimes the voice recognition isn't perfect. It doesn't know who it's speaking to sometimes, or it doesn't understand the request or perhaps does the wrong action. And of course that can be a little bit annoying to be sure, but I think the pros outweigh the cons. What do you think? Do you have a Nest Hub or Nest Hub Max in your house? Where do you keep it and what do you use it for? The other thing is that I can't really tell you much about the sleep tracking features. I have a first gen Nest Hub which doesn't have the feature. Plus, I wouldn't really use it. I've got an Apple Watch that takes care of the sleep tracking for me. I'm really curious as well if there are any killer features I didn't mention that you love. Let me know your thoughts or comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to click that like button so that it helps more people find this content and subscribe to get more technology, Paul, in your feed on a regular basis. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.